Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to your continuing coverage of the Defense Suit, brought to you and organized by Join Dota, commentated by Tosh Lee, and sponsored by Razor and Ben Q. Yes, indeed, and we're going to have to do something today that I really haven't wanted to do at all throughout the entirety of this tournament, and that is skip a lot of games, because there are a bloody, there's heaps of games in the Defense, I don't have that much time, well actually I do, I'm just lazy, well the fact of the matter is, I want to get them all done, or as many done as possible, before the international comes around. I want to try and get the finals done, probably the 10 or 15 games that happen before the finals. And as a result, instead of going through every single game, I'm just going to be skipping through pages. I'm going to try and look for games that either look pretty good or have heroes that you don't normally see or possibly teams that everyone loves. And this is a, a bit of a mix of that, really. I'm skipping, like, I was before something like page... I don't know, 13 out of 23. So now I'm skipping on my page 8 out of 23. It's so much work to do. And the reason I want to get it all done before the international is I'm probably going to stop doing the defense come the international because I'm going to be live casting the international August 31st through to September 2nd. As you can see in the side right here, it will be fantastic. It will be over on twitch.tv slash Hoshley Dota. It will also all be uploaded to the YouTube, to this YouTube channel. And it is going to be, uh, well... Glorious. A good couple of days, a fantastic couple of days that I cannot wait to jump into. But jumping into what we have for you here, coming up for you here today, god damn it! On the defense to continue on with the group stages, we have Team Evil Geniuses from the Americas over on the Radiant side, and they will be fighting it out against Mouse Sports from Germany over on the Dire side. Two teams, Evil Geniuses, very well known within the world of esports, very well respected and appreciated, with Mouse Sports being an absolute fan favorite within the world of Dota 2. So, two very popular teams. And who is this guy? Here's someone we don't see every day. Who is this? This is Lycanthrope, a hero that's horrible. And we'll go into exactly why he's a pain in the ass to deal with. First, I want to go through who is playing on whose side and so on and so forth. We have Captain in the Captain's Chair on EG side. We have Malik, then we have Universe, Bulba, a stand-in, Yuli, and then Fear. And over on the Mouseport side, a full roster today, we have Captain1437, Come With Me, Sing Sing, Black, and Bamboo. And jumping into the draft, straight into the Captain's Draft, we have being removed out by Team EG, Darkseer, Enigma, and Shadow Demon, with Mouse Sports removing out Tinker, Brewmaster, and Prophet. Shadow Demon and Enigma, two pretty straightforward uh, heroes to be removed by EG because we know Bambo's fantastic with those black holes if you've ever watched, well, any game where he's playing as that Enigma. And then we have Shadow Demon who messes with so many lineups that Mouse Sports love to run with. Of course, a classic, Lashrak and Shadow Demon, but also Conquer and Shadow Demon, which works together so nicely. But the first pickup for Mouse Sports going to be that Lycanthrope. And why is Lycanthrope so horrible to deal with? Because he can do pretty much everything. He can jungle, he can solo lane, he can... You, you can do him in a, a duo lane if you want, and his wolves can... If you're in the jungle, you have a perfectly fine time. If you're in lane, you can harass continuously with your wolves while getting last hits, and it costs you nothing but a bit of mana. It's so easy to do, it's so horrible to deal with, and towards just the mid stages of the game, once you build up the Treads, Medallion, and that Vlad, not only can you solo Rashan, but you can push towers like a boss. It's like Broodmother or Lone Druid, where if you leave them alone, they're going to kill towers, but Lycan can do it all over the map, and he can do it so freely freaking fast. It's unbelievable how good this guy is. However, one thing I have to say is over in Chinese Dota, if you've been watching the Beyond the Summit tournament, Lycans has an awful win rate. The Chinese teams just don't seem to... I don't even know what they're doing. They're just playing normally and Lycan's not a problem at all. So maybe Lycan isn't as scary as teams make it out to be, but we will have to wait and see. After all, Mouse Sports have a very nice lineup selected for them today, but so do the team of EG. We've got two pushing powerhouses, three pushing powerhouses, Chen, Broodmother, and Lone Druid, two solo side lane split pushes, and a jungler, which can assist out with early ganks, and, uh, well, a bolster creep waves, bolster pushing with the fact that he can higher, well not really higher, but pretty much just steal their minds and coerce them to be on his side and has a have a nice little army of creeps to help with killing shit, for, for lack of a better term. Mouse sports, however, have an awful lot of push on that. 
Sand King's actually a really good pickup to go up against a Broodmother. This makes it pretty obvious the laning thus far. It makes it obvious we have two solo laners coming out of EG. So that obviously we're going to have Broodmother at top, Lone Druid at bottom. SK's most likely going to be making his way to top to try and counter that Broodmother. Caustic Finale works out very nicely because Broodmother will then have trouble getting near the Creep Wave or else face losing her Spiderlings and losing a good chunk of her health. However, this comes off at a trade because SK needs to get those levels up in order to take advantage of this. If SK SK falls a little bit behind, then Broodmother can just start spamming those spiderlings and uh, SK is going to die pretty fast. Simple as that. However, you might think that maybe they won't put Broodmother up top because they probably see that that SK has been picked up, so they're going to want to be careful. Lycan will most likely be spending his time in the jungle, possibly pay played by Black or Bamboo. And now mouse spots are removing solo mids. And Voker being taken out because we don't have a solo mid. We have junglers. We have two solo, you know, side lane heroes. We have no solo mid or no sort of dual lane. So that's what mouse spots are focusing on removing out now. Mouse spots also don't really have a hard carry. Lycan can sort of semi carry, but he falls off towards the later stages of the game compared to other people like Morphling. The advantage of Lycan is that he can push like a machine at the early stages and deal massive amounts of damage to freaking everything. Absolutely everything. It's horrible to deal with. So Invoker, as I mentioned a few moments ago, Mouthwart's next hero to remove out. Of course, solo mid. That's what's going to be taken out for now. We're taking away into the team of EG's bonus time. Thinking long and hard. Clinks. This is sort of a respect ban, really. We've seen Black play Clinks a lot, and he's pretty friggin' fantastic at it. Build up that Orchid and start zooming around the map and just popping people. And Clinks would work out quite nicely, actually. Uh... Simply due to the fact that we don't have a hard carry, and Clinks can perform that role. And Windrunner gets taken out by Mouse Sports, which seems a bit curious to me. Windrunner, you can put a solo mid, but the thing is, we already have two solo heroes, solo uh, side lane heroes, which is typically with the role that Windrunner performs. So it it's, doesn't seem like something that they would pick up. But we'll have to wait and see. Yes, indeed. That's the fifth band to come out of Mouse Sports, waiting for the fifth and final band to come out of Team EG. What will we have? What do we want to deny from Mouse Sports? We have so much as it is. We've got good single target control with the Burrow Strike, with that Split Earth, and then we've got good AoE. We've got Caustic Finale for counter pushing. We've got Tower pushing with the Edict. We've got Creep pushing with the Lightning Storm. And of course, we have that Lycan. We have a very nice lineup. What heroes could they possibly... Beastmaster is going to be the next one to be taking, taken out. And looking at the lanes, we could see Lashrak mid, SK at top. And that will leave Beastmaster to possibly go bottom. And we would have someone else with the SK at top, or maybe someone else with Lashrak. So that could work out nicely. So Beastmaster, a good hero to be removed by the team of Mouse Sports. Beastmaster taking that off lane would have worked out quite nicely, actually. Uh, one thing I'm wondering is, uh, where are they... Where are they going to put the Broodmother and Lone Druid? Because you want to try and go in the lane that the SK isn't in for the Broodmother. Because of course the SK Caustic Finale are going to cause some brood, some problems for the Broodmother. And if you can trick them, it works out really nicely because SK won't get that level advantage that he needs in order to take advantage of his Caustic Finale and really screw Broodmother over. But both sides having very powerful compositions. Of course, EG have a lot of push. However, their push is more centric towards uh, Brute Mother's going to need some levels. Lone Druid's going to need some farm. On the other hand, Lycan is... Uh, he, he doesn't really need anything. He just spends his time in the jungle. Or he can go in lane and harass like a boss. And cause lots of problems for EG. We've got SK who's just solid all around. Lashrak, once he gets a few points in the Diabolic Edict, suddenly towers will melt under their pure force. And 15 seconds of reserve time for Mouse Sports. We're thinking long and hard about the next couple of heroes. And Tidon's going to be the next pickup, which is <clears throat> another hero that's very effective against the Broodmother. Anchor Smash, wipe out waves of Spidelings, as well as reduce the damage that they cause. And then, of course, we have that Croc and Shell, which further reduces the damage from the Spidelings. In fact, it effectively nullifies any damage that those Spidelings can deal. So putting Tidehunter against up against the Broodmother would work out very nicely. Same can be said for the S-King. I think, think the SK is a little bit... I don't know, I think the, S I think the Tidehunt is better, because he can just survive against it so well. But this works out nicely, because if the SK has some problems against the Broodmother, we can swap. Swap the Tidehunter and the SK, and uh, put the Tidehunter up against the Broodmother. As for the lanes, uh, I'm going to guess... Uh, Lycan in jungle, SK top, will have Lash... 
I'm not sure we could have Lashrak solo mid and that leaves bottom with Tidehunter alongside someone else. Or we could see SK and Tidehunter up top. That seems a little bit overkill to go up against the Broodmother, assuming the Broodmother goes to top. We'll have to wait and see. But in terms of their team fight, they've got freaking so much Dino synergy. Mansa. They've got good AoE, they've got good initiation. Venomats is going to be the next pickup for the team of the team of EG. And this makes me think Tri-Lane. We've got... Imagine we have Broodmother, I think an aggressive Tri-Lane up at top. We'll have Chen in their jungle. This will be really good against the Lycan, because Lycan wants to spend his time in the jungle. If you have Chen in their jungle messing, messing crap up, stealing the big, the big creeps that Lycan wants to get his hold of... Get, wants to kill and then use them to harass that will work out very nicely. We put the Venomans up top with the Chen that provides a slow and now we need another hero that can do damage up at the top lane. Something like Night Stalker, something like maybe a Morphling to perform the role of hard carry. He's, he could work out very nicely and get a nice bit of farm, get a nice couple of kills. Uh, I, I was thinking maybe Anti-Mage but probably not. But maybe Night Stalker would work out nicely because we have a slow, and that will actually go with the Venomats. And Venomats are with the Venomous Scale, and we have the Night Stalker with his Void. A tri lane up top with Chen in their jungle, that would work freaking perfectly. And that leaves Broodmother to go bottom, or we'll have Lone Druid going solo mid. <clears throat> As for the team of Mouse Sports, I'm thinking. Uh, actually, not entirely sure. Maybe we won't see Lycan in the, in the jungle. I'm not sure, I think SK and Lashrak definitely have to team up together, they work nice. together so nicely, but we want to try and put that SK against against the Broodmother, so we'll have to wait and see exactly how Mouse Sports lane this up. Night Stalker going to be the fifth and final pickup for the team of EG, and this is pretty much screaming an aggressive tri lane. Chen at top in their jungle, messing everything up, messing up Lycan's day, stealing his creeps, block the neutral, the neutral easy camp. Lycan will have a pretty awful time if that's the case. <clears throat> Excuse me. And hopefully we'll be jumping in the game in, this, in the next couple of moments. For whatever reason it takes, we spend a lot of time on the on this screen showcasing the everything and everything and whatnot. And hopefully we won't have a pause and I forgot to change my mouse settings. Hold up a sec. Mouse settings restored and as we normally do, we have a pause at the start of the game. But this gives us time, gives us gives, God damn it. Gives us time to go through who is playing who. We have Universe taking up the role of that Night Stalker. Malik playing as a Chen. Bulba taking up the role of the Broodmother. Fear playing as that Lone Druid. And then we have the standard Yuli taking up the role of the Venomancer. And over here on the team of Mouse Sports, Sing Sing playing as Lycan. So, solo mid Lycan maybe? Typically, Sing Sing plays a hero that goes solo mid. And we're not putting Bambo or Black on him. So, we'll have to wait and see exactly what where that Lycan goes. So we have Come With Me playing as a little Shrak. We have Black playing as the SK and Bambo playing as that Tidehunter. For some reason I feel I missed someone. Yes indeed. Stuck in the mix here. Crystal Maiden being played by 1437. I'm mostly thinking Lashrak would be great solo mid. Get those levels up. Get some e points in Edict. Points in Split Earth. And uh, help out with ganks. They can tag along with SK and uh, go and freaking gank people, as well as push down towers, will work out to work out very nicely. Alas, we shall w have to wait and see, and I really hate when we pause right when the game starts. Why is this bad? Because no one has bought anything, no one has skilled anything, no one is even making their way towards their respective lanes, and as a result, there is very little to talk about. Now, what EG have to do is they have to hold on. Mouse Sports are going to have a lot. Mouse Sports team composition seems really freaking good. We're going to have a lot of pushing early game, but if that doesn't work, we've got fantastic team fight synergy and damage that we can deal. So looking at the lanes, Crystal Maiden and Tide Hunter. I'm trying to think where they will go. I think they will go together down bottom. I never thought Tide Hunter having to worry about being babysat. Maybe, maybe with wait, if if Lycan's going. I'm really not sure. We could see maybe Lashrak, Crystal Maiden, and Tidehunter going down bottom. And we'll have SK going top, presumably where the Broodmother would be. And that will leave Sing Sing to go solo mid, as he does. However, I, I just feel that Tidehunter and Lashrak, or, or rather just Lashrak and SK, should be together under, under all circumstances. Because they synergize so nicely. Split Earth into Burrow Strike. And we'll put Tidehunter solo top to go up against the Broodmother. I think they might want to try and utilize the Caustic Finale that SK can deliver, and if it doesn't work out, we'll swap it with the Tidehunter. Let's just wait and see how the lanes unfold, who will be going where, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> Again with these guys, Tri-Lane at top, Lone Druid at bottom, 
oh, Lone Druid at mid, Broodmother at bottom, or maybe not. We're, we're all going up north. I think we're looking for the early first blood. Lone Druid seems to be making his way towards mid, maybe just scouting out or bottom. We'll have to wait and see. I think he's just doing a little bit of scouting with the bear. Going to check for where the runes spawn. Over here for the team mouse sports, we have Black going solo top in the form of that SK with the rest of the team heading down south. Seems we're looking for that early first blood as well, but will it be secured? We will have to wait and see. Lycan Wolves are joining the pack here, not actually going out and checking for runes as you normally do. But oh well, it seems we're going to have Lone Druid going solo bot and Broodmother in mid. I guess that works because I'm going to have that, indeed, that tri-lane at top. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I wish, I wish there was like a, a microphone mute button on Fraps. There's one neck split, which is awesome. So if anything happens, I just press my mute button and then all of a sudden everything's fine. It's not picking up sounds from the microphone. But alas, Fraps has no such luxury. I might just make a hotkey that turns, disables my microphone completely. That will work out nicely too. No first blood will be spilt. Both sides, uh, we had we had them grouping up, but no one actually committing or walking past a tower, really. Which is surprising, I have to say. Night Stalker already walking his way out. One gets this rune, and it is an illusion down bottom, which the team of EG know about because of the bear here. And we have Tidehunter venturing in. Looking for first blood, we are going to get spot. Oh, wait, that's wolves on the same team. We are going to see the bear. Incorrectly named Lycan Wolf. Illusion going to be secured here by the Night Stalker, placing them around in the jungle. I think he might use these to block the camps, which is just smart. But then again, Chen might want some of these creeps, so he might not. Centaur might be stolen almost immediately here by the Chen. Fantastic pickup for him. Yes, indeed. SK being caught out. I think we're doing a swap. A SK, once he sees this trial lane at top, he's realized, yeah, I can't fight this. And I think Sing Sing's going to make his way to top. Sing Sing should be able to handle this, simply due to the fact that his Lycan. He can use his Wolves to last hit and harass, or maybe just last hit if he ha if he's having problems. And Lone Druid against this tri lane of bot should... It should do, should be relatively safe, because he can use the bear to get last hits. He can stay back and make sure that he doesn't get too many too much harassment dealt on him. They can try and do damage to the bear, but he's tanky, and uh, he's going to be absolutely fine. Sing Sing already getting caught out here, but... It, He's, he'll, he'll be fine, he'll be fine. It's all good. And while Lone Druid should ultimately be A-OK, -okay, we still have to be really friggin' careful. Because one split Earth and things could end very fast. We have the Ensnare to come out of the Crystal Maiden. Gush to make him slow the hell down. Over in mid, we can already see the SK having some problems. Being forced to use his healing salve effectively immediately. And Lycan currently one for one, not having a happy job thus far. He's a little bit reluctant to push himself forward because we have this powerful tri lane at top. And already we're pressuring the first tower. The creep lane getting intercepted here before it can reach the tower and attempt to defend. But the same is happening over at bottom. However, we have extra reinforcements. We're using this bear to pull aggro away from the tower to make sure they can't continue to pressure, which is really Dyer's smart by by fear, attack. by the by the lone druid. And top tower might take a fall already. It's getting beaten down. We have the centaur Khan to reinforce. And we also have the plague wards to stop the creep wave before it can even reach and defend. And the upcoming wave might be enough to take it out or do a nice chunk of damage. But right now, the lone druid is getting nothing. He's all the way back here. He's killing the creeps that he's pulling back, which is his main way of getting last hits. And I think he might venture into the jungle. Because uh, he... He can't really do much, he has to be careful, and Tidehunter and Crystal Maiden already looking for a kill, venturing in here, because they know that Lone, Dru Lone Druid's buggered off. But he's keeping, this is, this is so smart, he's using the, he can't pull aggro, but the fact that he's just sitting there means that the creeps go to attack him, and that means that they're not attacking the tower, they're attacking the bear instead, so it's really smart, it's preventing the creep wave from doing tons of damage to the tower, like it is over the top, and the top tower has already taken a fall, three minutes into a game, EG securing their first tower, and Lycan having nothing, entering into the jungle, already being caught out by Chen, and now he has to run away, or else die. Because that centaur Khan can do a lot of damage, level 6 versus a level 2, and looking at the last hits, he's currently 4-2 to two on Sing Sing, on the Lycan, having a horrible job thus far. Crystal Maiden possibly getting caught out by the bear, maybe not, just doing a few right clicks. Floating error sign still present on her for whatever reason. 
And we can see the Caustic Finale doing quite a bit of damage whenever Broodmother gets close. However, the Broodmother is capable of dealing plenty of harassment to that SK. And Lycan still unable to get any farm at all. He can't go in lane, he gets harassed due to this really aggressive tri lane. And when nighttime comes around, the damage is going to start coming in. The EG have a very good lineup and they're utilizing it perfectly. They're denying this Lycan, which is exactly what you need to do. It's exactly what you need to do against the Lycan. However, you need to remember that they are dedicating three heroes to it, but they are getting a result out of it. Again, they're not, the Lycan's not getting any farm and we're killing towers. This tier 2 tower is being brought down a quarter of its health and it's going to continue to come down, but the tier 1 tower is also taking a fall. The track running into the trees here, trying to avoid attacks from the tower, and we're intercepting the creep wave, absorbing all the hits up, doesn't even have the crocodile shell, doesn't care in the slightest. Okay, god. Game's having, oh it's just the bear, and Fraps also decides to freak the hell out, as it does sometimes. 28 to 1 currently on the SK, doing a very nice job against the Broodmother, who's 15 to 2, so the Broodmother not doing quite as well as the SK. So SK is actually doing a, a good job. Even though we had the level disadvantage as we had to rotate, it still worked out nicely. We can see that the Caustic Finale means that the Broodmother can't get close or else all the Spidelings die. You see that? If a Spidling was in there, if she was in there, she would have taken so much damage. And the Tier 1 Tower of the bottom lane takes a fall, finally being secured by the team of Mouseports. And we have the Spidelings assisting out Fear over in the jungle to The bear's forced to go into the jungle because he can't go in lane. He can't really get all that many last hits. And the tower's fallen, so there's no point in him sticking around to, to defend. And it seems we're already looking for some kills, but immediately getting caught out by the Spidelings here. He's venturing around, looking for potential money. Crystal Maiden going to join in. Killing the Spidling, getting a little bit of free gold. Bamboo is enjoying it oh so much. And we're pushing so far forward. The tier 2 tower has... Oh, it's not been taken down yet. It's on half HP. And I think we might be moving in for a kill here. We have a Crystal Maiden and Tidehunter just chilling out as of this very moment. They want possibly Lone Druid to just walk up here, but I can't freaking draw on the map, which is really annoying. I used to be able to do it. But alas, they're not going to find him. Lone Druid is all the way down bottom here. Nowhere to be found. And we're just continuing to push down this lane. We have Arcane Boots, which means that we can keep Edicting, we can keep Split Earthing, and the bear's now absorbing hits from the Edict, which is very smart. We're using this bear so well, but over in the middle lane, First Blood might be had. We have the Epicenter being channeled as well. A lot of it, a lot of dedication to take down this Broodmother, but it's well worth it in the end. Mouseport securing the First Blood over the middle lane, and the Tier 2 Tower takes a fall over at top. So they're pushing like crazy here, however, the Shrak is going to be able to do the exact same thing. Arcane Boots, once again, means that he can spam that level 3 Edict all the time. However, the Lone Druid and his Bear doing a fantastic job at defending, using the Bear to not only absorb hits from the Creep Wave instead of having the Tower take it, but absorb Edict hits. It's really friggin' smart. And I think the team of Mouse Sports are sick of this happening. We're moving in, we want to kill this Lone Druid, not only to deny a bit of farm, but to also stop him from frickin' interrupting our pushing. We're waiting in position to go and sing sing void to land down venomous scale to follow and look at the movement speed go to absolutely zero and here's a second kill for the team or the first kill rather for the team of eg landing there on sing sing the sing sing being he's freaking seven to two he's seven minutes in that's one last hit a minute he's having an awful time thus far we're moving in the lone droid edict doing too much damage and one more hit takes him down easy peasy the crystal maiden ult however got very very low in the process but she'll just healing salve her way back to full hp be absolutely fine. Looking at the gold, further favor than I thought. However, this tower is going to balance that out a nice chunk, and the XP also being in favor for the team of EG because Sing Sing's just unable to get any farm. The jungle is being controlled entirely by Team EG, and especially with these two towers being taken down, it means all of this area, pretty much all of this area, as I just randomly drawn on the map is pretty much under EG's control. Mount Sports have to be careful when venturing over there because members of EG could be there anywhere at any moment and just freaking kill ya. Simple as that. 31 to 3 over on the Broodmother. Creep score looking relatively nice but 50 to 1 on the SK and look at the Burrow Strike, look at the Caustic Finale, you create Spidelings, I killed them. That's exactly how SK responds to any Spidelings, they just die. And what level is a Caustic Finale on him thus far? Currently, level 2. 1 in Sandstorm and 3 4 in Burrow Strike. <coughs> Excuse me. For some reason the illusion wasn't correctly colored. We're using them to scout out. Lycan Wolves in the air. Oh, what the hell is that? That's a long name. 
Continuing to push down this bottom tower. Bear getting caught out. Going to receive a couple of hits, but be absolutely fine in the end. Moving in, getting a couple of last hits. Soaking up that XP. And the spiders being sent to the jungle so they don't immediately get popped by this freaking SK. By Black. But we're continuing to push down the bottom lane. Arcane Boots. Do we have any more Arcane Boots? We have two sets of Arcane Boots. This is so much mana. This is so much pushing. They just can keep at it. And I think they might venture into the jungle, maybe try and kill this Broodmother and her Spidelings. I think that's exactly what they're going to do. Ward's being placed down, give a nice bit of vision. Now let's look for some kills. I think the reinforcements are already rolling in towards this middle lane. However, we're just going to keep pushing this bottom lane. We've got so much mana, we don't care at all. We just keep pushing two pairs of mana boots. Glorious. But the Lone Druid, once again, doing a great job at defending. Look at this. Holy crap, it's glowing blue. That is awesome. As if, as if the Badger is an awesome in and of itself. However, we might have a bit of an engagement to go on. We have the Spiders immediately getting nuked. Lightning Storm going to do a nice chunk of damage as well. We also have, of course, the Anger Smash. The Spiders moving in. The Broodmother very daring indeed. Sentry Ward to be placed down. Lightning Storm to go out. Nuke the Spider Wave once again. We're moving in Split Earth. Nice Split Earth to land there down there. The Spiderlings picking up the kill there on the Tidehunter. They're eating, doing a nice chunk of damage to everyone nearby. Hand of God to pop off. Crystal Maiden getting very low in HP. Burrow Strike in. In comes the Epicenter. And here it comes. A lot of damage to be dealt. Universe immediately takes a fall. Crystal Maiden goes down as well. But the SK is going to pay for it. He's not going to be able to get out. He's going into his Sandstorm. And he'll be able to Burrow Strike out of this, actually. So he will be fine. Bear's not going to be able to attack. Running into Roshano, he's just securing himself. He's working his way towards a Bloodstone. Perseverance already in hand, as well as a Point Booster. So now all he needs to get is that Vitality Boost, and he will have a Bloodstone. Ten minutes in, and he's almost got himself a Bloodstone, needing about 900 more. The Shrak, the gold, all the gold from this tower. He's having a wonderful time, doing a fantastic job. Tidehunter getting caught out. Two Wildkins are going to do a lot of damage. The Kraken and Shell is going to absorb a couple of hits, as well as that Anchor Smash reduces the damage. Who's going to win the engagement, however? We have the Tornadoes coming out. I don't think Bamboo is going to come out ahead. We have the Nuke to come out of the channel. A few more right clicks will be able to secure the kill. One right click. Just need one more. Venomous Scale. Ward to play, be placed down. And it will not be enough. However, we have Lycan coming. Wait, they're on the same team. Never mind. And Tidehunter managing to successfully escape out of that. The Venomats are taking a kill over on the Crystal Maiden down here. Venturing well in the wrong place. You really can't step in this jungle. I'm very surprised we don't have the uh, the Night Stalker just jumping around the place, trying to pick up as many kills as possible. I also forgot to mention, we have the increased armor aura from these two Wildkins, which makes the Chen even, difficult to, even more difficult to kill. In fact, makes anyone nearby even more difficult to kill. A bonus of six armor. Caustic Finale still doing plenty of work over in this lane. And come with me, still continuing to p push down bottom. <clears throat> Lycan currently 21 to 5. He's finally getting a nice little bit of farm. While it's not quite at the level that would be desired, he's still... I assume he's relatively happy that he's finally getting the opportunity to venture into his own jungle and pick up kills. But we have to be careful, Chen is not too far away, as are many other members of Team EG, so Sing Sing has to be very careful. And Chen already has his mechanism, not getting arcane boots actually. Typically it's something you get because it can refill the mana of your little, your little conversions. But alas, going straight for a mechanism for the extra healing. Night Stalker very close to his Vanguard, needing about 200 more. And I think we might have an engagement over down the bottom. Venomous getting beaten down, running into the tree. Spidling Charge to come out. The Crystal Maiden pops. The right click damages to come out. Sage Hunger to come out as well. Nice split earth to be picked up. The Edict doing nice chunk of damage to everyone nearby. And the Tide Hunter might barely escape. However, Lashrak will pay for it. Entangle Roots to come down and immediately getting popped. SK thinking of trying to engage, but realizing it's a bad idea, and I think the Tidehunter might get taken down as well. The Broodmother is just a little bit too fast. Spidling Charge to come out, and a double kill being secured by the Broodmother. I mean, rather, for the team of Evil Geniuses, 7-3 to three currently. Having a flying start, especially with the Lycan being so far behind. Treads and Ring of Bacillus. No Vlads yet. No nothing. It looks like we want to push out this middle tower. We do have the SK to defend with that Caustic Finale. Is going to be a lot of power. We have another pair of Arcane Boots. These are three sets of Arcane Boots for the team of Mouse Sports. That is so much mana you wouldn't even believe. They can just spam their spells out all day, every day. Don't have to worry about a single thing because there's so much mana. Broodmother looks to be working her way towards a BKB already. Very early BKB indeed.
Blink Dagger being secured here by the SK. This is going to allow for some fantastic engagements. We're making use of the epicenter, making use of the burrow strike. This should work out nicely. I can having 1k in the bank. Not all that much at all. Night Stalker having the Vanguard being secured here by himself, and I think we might have engagement over in the middle lane. The team of Mouse Bolts moving in. We want to take this tier 1 tower. We've only... We haven't secured a... Oh, wait. We've cleared out bottom pretty well. But we want to take more towers. We want more gold. It will be delicious. We already have Broodmother trying to build up her army of Spiderlings in an attempt to defend. And I don't think Mouse Sports will have the power to push this out just yet, especially with Chen and his creeps there, with Broodmother and the nice little army, as well as the Lone Druid being here. He's going to be denied here by the Spiderlings. And the team of Mouse Sports look like they're just going to stand their ground. Both sides want this tier 1 tower over in the mid, neither side quite willing enough to commit to get it. And meanwhile, Lone Druid's just continuing to get free farm over at the bottom before being denied plenty of farm. Now he's getting heaps, 50 to 12 thus far. It's not particularly great, but he had an awful start, so he's bringing it back, getting the items that he needs. What items does he have, actually? Where the hell is his bear? Oh, it's going back to base. Pick. Nope, that's, that's Chen's Creeps. I have no idea where the hell his bear is. There's his bear, just doing a bit of scouting about, just having a stout shield on hand with the amount of cash. 2,500, looks like he's going straight for a sacred relic, getting getting phase boots on himself as opposed to the bear, typically what you normally see. Also see fear often run with the tranquil boots on the lone drill, which work out nicely. T1 tower taking a lot of damage, being brought to about a tenth of its HP, maybe a fifth. Not in deny range, however, and a nice army of plague wards will mean pushing through to this it will be a little bit difficult. Caustic Finale doing work once again. And see, now the engagement begins. We have Spidling's charges to go down on the Crystal Mage. He's getting very low in health. So squishy. And the Shrak has himself a Bloodstone, however, finally being secured that. Sacrificing, of course, his Arcane Boots for it. We, were, we already have two pairs of that, so who gives a crap? Spidling's trying to chase down the Crystal Mage, but she successfully escapes to safety. And this will force Mouse Sports back for a little bit. Lick their wounds, which prepares a team of EG to continue holding out. Now, I really feel that we should be pushing somewhere. We saw the amount of pushing that we had done at this top lane. EG should be continuing that trend at lanes where there's no contestion going on. But then again, we probably want this lone drill to just get free farm as much as possible over down the bottom and defend mid. But the mid does eventually take a full Diabolic Edict doing too much damage and the tier 1 tower over the mid secured by the team of Mouse Sports. I think going for Rashan, we're going straight for Rashan. Medallion of Courage in hand for the Lycan throw. Are we going to be able to get it without the Vlads, without the lifesteal, but the rest of Mouse Sports are moving in? And I really don't think the team of EG are going to let them do this so easily. They already know about it. We have wards come out from them as well as sentry wards, so they absolutely know what is going on. And now's the time for engagement. We're no way going to let them have this Rashan. But it's being brought down to half HP already. Spiderlings moving in. Are we going to try and steal the kill? This could be pretty bloody fantastic if it is successful. Crystal Maiden being caught out already. Are we going to try and steal the Spiderlings? Will it be successful? It will not. Trying to steal with the Spiderling charge, but it's the currently the Lincoln Sphere effect that Rashan has was up and indeed absorbed the spell. And in comes the engagement. Aegis of the Immortal being secured by the Lycan. Trying to run away before he takes a fall. Ravage to fall off. Insatiable Hunger to pop there on the Broodmother. Hand of God to pop down as well. In EG looking fantastic thus far in this engagement. SK blinking out there of the pit. And they will all successfully escape. I'm very surprised EG didn't follow this up. However, the Shrak could get caught out Venomous Gale to land on him, but they don't want to dive past the tower. Instead, they might just secure this tier 1 and settle with that. Which would work out nicely for them. SK waiting in position. Wants to get that blink to epicenter action going off. Is he going to commit to it, however? We have the Shrak moving in, having that pulse over, doing damage to everything that's nearby, and the team of EG decide to back off. Looking at the items, what do we have going up for you today? Of course, we have that Bloodzone Smoke Gang going to come out for the team of Mouse Sports. Other members teleporting in. We want to try and pick someone off. In fact, we want to get a kill on this Lone Druid. And this will be the easiest kill of their life. He has no idea that it's coming, or maybe he does. He's trying to run away as best as can using those phase boots, sending the bear ahead to spot out that, yes, indeed, death is awaiting him, and he will be easily able to escape, especially with those phase boots. And they will just clean up the creep wave and possibly transition into pushing this bottom lane, pressuring the, the Lone Druid. How well, the Shrek's getting pushed on, Spiling charges to come out, no it will not indeed, Lightning Storm damaging everything that's nearby, and the Shrek will be perfectly fine. So much mana regen because of that Bloodstone and its 6 charges. That's what's backing off to go to defend the middle lane, maybe kill, some kill someone off, possibly kill Bulbub, we'll have to wait and see, he's building up a nice army of Spiderlings, however. 
but we're all closing in the team. Mouse Sports went wanting to press the issue, but EG are not going to let them get, have it so easily. They're already coming in to defend. And EG, they're not... Again, we, we, we push this top lane so much, but we're not really doing any more pushing. And Lone Druids are not currently at bottom getting free farm. We're just sort of sitting here and defending. But I guess I want to farm their heroes up and then just freaking kill them. And they have to be careful of engaging because we do have the Aegis of the Immortal in hand for that Lycanthrope who's for some reason headless. He also has Vlad's in hand too. He's going to just spend the time in their jungle farming away, getting a little bit of revenge. The Spidelings are going to catch him out. What the hell is wrong with him? This He didn't look like this before. What the Christ? Something's very wrong, wrong with Lycanthrope. He looks just sad. And tier 1 tower is still standing over the top lane. The team of Mouse Balls want to push this down with Lashrac in the mix. Lightning Storm, Split Earth. That tower is going to melt instantly. Here we come. Diabolic Edict to be popped down. And look at the health just drop. Immediately, the tier 1 tower takes a fall, but we have EG moving in. We have the Void to land, but the tower will take a fall. Trying to deny will not happen. Blink to Burrow Strike coming from the Night Stalker, but Chen coming into Rainfall. Split Earth to follow. Going to send the Night Stalker back to base. Chen successfully did, and he also manages to escape. The Venomance is staying nearby, just a Venomous Scale in case they continue to pursue, which they are doing. We are going to get a kill here on the Ursa Warrior. Get a little bit of free gold. Kill one of Chen's creeps. And we're going to keep pushing. We're going to take this tier 2 tower. We've got Edict. We can do so much damage. Also have the SK waiting in position. Still having that Burrow Strike. However, the Shrek taking a lot of damage from everyone that's nearby. Silence to land there on the Tide Hunter. Also taking a lot of damage. Spidling charges. His health is so low. Split Earth to come down. A nice one to land there on the Night Stalk. He might pay for it, however, is going to immediately TP out. Where's the Lycan? He's just continuing to farm. A successful attack and an escape for the team of Mouse Sports. Getting, them as, getting themselves a couple of towers and then just leaving, which is the best thing that they can possibly do. Lycan looks so funny without his claws and no head. Seriously, look at him. He looks ridiculous. I think anyone looks ridiculous when they're missing a head. It goes without saying. Bit of counter warding action going to go down for the team of EG. And we might have the Lycan throw intercept them or get intercepted. Arcane boots in hand for the Chen, finally. Do we actually have a mechanism for mouse spots? I'm not sure if we do. We do not. Ghost Scepter for the Lashrak, so when he gets right clicked down by everyone, he can pop that Ghost Scepter and easily escape. But of course, still has to be careful of those nukes. Bulba moving in, trying to get a bit of damage on the Crystal Maiden. This Ensnare is going to land down. Lycanthrope trying to beat him down, but the damage is not enough. Sentry Ward being popped down. Spidling going to be brought out. Edict doing tons of damage to everything that's nearby. Lashrak taking a nice chunk of damage as well. And this tower will take a fall. Gush to fall out. Fortification to drop as well. But the tower, to the tier 2 tower, will take a fall. And EG putting, being put straight on the defensive. Pulse Nova just killing everything. And we're moving in. We want to secure this tier 3. We're getting awfully greedy, but the team of Mouse Sports is very confident in their ability. And now the team of EG are moving in. Venomous Gale to go down. And BKB, as well as the Insatiable Hunger to go down. Crystal Maiden immediately pops, and the damage on the Broodmother is not enough, but she is getting awfully low. Forced to back off here. Poison Nova, as well as a fantastic Ravage, but the Hand of God counters everything that happens, as well as the Mechanism. Venomata takes a fall. So does the Lashrak. And immediately, suddenly Sing Sing has to run the hell out with that beast form. SK might take a fall, but he has a Burrow Strike, has a Blink, but they are both on cooldown. Negative Earn Charge to go down on him. Sing Sing TPs back to safety, and the SK looks like he'll be able to escape. Easy peasy, but the tower's in range. It takes some damage, but he blinks out, and he'll be fine. Radiance in hand from the bear. This is going to give the team of EG a lot of pushing. And you can see Mouse Sports got greedy. They got so greedy. They should have settled for the tier 2 and then just backed off. But they decided to keep pushing. I guess they thought because we have the Aegis, we can just keep it up. But they didn't focus on Sing Sing. They focused on everyone else. And as a result, they all fell. A lot of easy kills. Easy pickups for the team of EG. However, the team of Mouse Sports have returned immediately to the game, EG trying to capitalize on the advantage that they were just given, and try and push down the tier 1 tower over the mid, which they should hopefully be able to successfully do. Tide Hunter moving in, trying to sway it just the tiniest little bit, fortification to come down, and Tide Hunter is taking a lot of damage, and Tangle almost landing down there, but here comes the Lycanthrope, a lot of damage, the Broodmother instantly pops, the right-click damage is too strong for the team of EG, two members instantly melting, Ly Lycan continuing to right-click everyone down, the Edict and the Pulse Nova doing so much damage, trying to TP out, but the damage is too much. And four out of five members of Evil Geniuses get immediately wiped out by the team of Mouse Sports. They're fine. They haven't even used up the Aegis. The amount of damage to come out of Lycan and his Wolves is just freaking insane. 
a minor interruption, but we will be continuing on straight into the game. And this is going to be a free barracks to Mouseport. So tier 3 tower immediately takes a fall. And Mouseports just can continue to push through the melee barracks, immediately melting with a range barrack to fall in a couple of moments. The Venomans are completely and utterly unable to perform any form of retaliation in the sort. And they're just going to rotate to bottom. We've taken the top, let's rotate to bottom. Boris tried to come in there on the Night Stalker, and Universe is going to rapidly take a fall, but the Medallion of Courage landing on him as well. Mech Charge as well as the Split Earth, but he will be able to escape. A lot of tank ability to come out of that Night Stalker. Void to land there on the Lycanthrope, but he will be ultimately fine. Moving in, a lot of damage to be landed there on the Shrak. And now the team of Mouse Bolts forced to retreat. Light tied on being caught out. Split Earth to come down. Silence to land there on the on the Crystal Maiden. Lycan throw going to run in. We have the epicenter coming down, however. BKB stopping all the damage with the Venomancer still takes a fall. And the right click damage is too much for the Broodmother to handle, even with a glorious BKB. Ravage to come down, only picking up the lone drill, but it will be enough to, in order to try and secure the kill on him. Crystal Maiden takes a fall, but she will pay for it. Trying to be sent back to base. Will it be successful? It will indeed. Buyback's coming out all round. We're really trying to burst down this bear. So much tank ability, and he is just going to be able to CP out. No, he will not. The Burrow Strike comes in, and the Lone Druid takes a fall. Barracks has taken a fall. The Barracks down the bottoms is still holding on strong. And the Acres of the Immortals still not being used up. However, Lycan... Ooh, we've still got a good couple of minutes on there, so we can continue to push and try and secure this bottom barracks. Barracks takes a fall. Lycanthrope continuing to push through. Universe doing what he can to try and defend. Popping up voids. Venomous Gale to go down. A few wards to be placed down as well, but this ranged barracks will not stand against the mine. Venomous Gale to go out. A lot of that damage. Sing Sing immediately popping, but he has the Aegis of the Immortal wanting to use that up. Tana taking a lot of damage. He will be able to anger smash his way to great safety. And in comes the Lycan once again, bursting everyone down. And Sing Sing is still hungry for more. Chasing out the Venomans. So a couple more right clicks will be able to secure the kill on him. Split Earth is barely missing. Very nicely done by him. And he does manage to escape, but at the cost of the ranged and melee barracks. We're going to just rotate to mid, rotate to top, push them back as hard as we can. And team of EG unable to do all that much. Diabol and Edict coming out already. The Creek Wave is nowhere to be found. And this tier 3 tower being brought to half HP within a matter of seconds. Reinforcements are trying to roll in. We stole one of Lycan's wolves because why not? And they do a nice chunk of damage. Spawn's Vitalings come out. Split Earth to land here on the bed. Is going to get bursted down with a few more right clicks. But it will just be recreated. No, it can't. It can't be recreated for another minute. So taking that bear down would be pretty crucial. Spawn's Vitalings land on the Tide Hunter. He is going to take a fall. But a Split Earth lands down. Hand of God to go down. But it's not enough. And the Broodmother takes a fall before we can get a kill. Venom scale to land down, but one more right click is enough to kill the Venomancer. However, the Lashrak does pay for it, and the Night Stalker is continuing to push forward. Entangle to land there on the Crystal Maiden. She will take a fall, and the Night Stalker is still wanting more kills. Tide Hunter very low on HP. Negative Urn Charge to counter his positive one. Burrow Strike to come through, and that will stop the pursuit. Of the ulti and the BKB, or rather the the two ultis from both of the heroes getting trapped right between the trees. The Blown Drill will immediately take a fall. Night Stalker doing what he can. Tide Hunter takes a fall. He secures what he wants. I strike you down. But they pay for it in the end. Radiance top barracks are under attack. And finally, the barracks over the top will take a fall. Venomans are doing what he can to defend. <clears throat> Tide Hunter picking himself up the Blink Dagger. I'm surprised we didn't buy back. But oh well. EG doing what they can to defend. We need to remember the time ranking. The longer it takes for your base to get destroyed, or the quicker you destroy an enemy base, all factors into the playoffs. If there is a tiebreaker. Shrek, the Shrek looking like he's working his way towards Shiva's, possibly. As if he didn't have enough AoE damage. Chen working for Drums of War. Still got quite a bit to go. Night Stalker wanting to secure himself a BKB. And looks like we're prepping for Rashan once again. Once we secure the Aegis of the Immortal, that will be uh, GG. Wait a second. Can you see through Lycan's head? I think you can. I think it's see-through. The hole in his neck where he's for some reason missing a head, which makes no sense. 
with a little bit more damage, the Aegis of the Immortal will be secured here. The Shrak picking it up this time. Well, I guess that makes sense because Lycanthrope is very tanky and the Shrak gets bursted down very quickly, but suddenly he'll return straight back into the game. And they think, yeah, we've killed that freaking other Shrak who's dealing massive amounts of AOE, AOE damage to everyone that's nearby, and then suddenly he comes back and uh, you just cry a little bit. Invisibility rune in hand for the Tide Hunter, moving himself far forward. We still haven't taken the, the, the barracks over at the top, and this is what the Team Mouse Bolt won as of this moment. Stealing one of the wolves once again. Radiance top barracks has fallen. Radiance top barracks are under attack. And the barracks finally take a fall. Top barracks has fallen. The, dire now have mega the last two standing defenses protecting the Ancient for the Team of Evil Geniuses. Time to getting awfully low on HP. And I think Malik's not particularly happy about the time ranking. But, alas, deal with it, good sir. Army of Wards will not be enough to stop the Edict, to stop all the damage, to stop the Pulse Nova, but we're moving in. Nice Ravage to come out there from the Tide Hunter, dropping before he dies. BKB to pop off for the, for the Broodmother, but it's not enough. The right-click damage is too much for her to handle. It. Maybe it is enough. Nope, in comes Sing Sing. One right-click pops it instantly with Lycan Throw, picking himself up a double kill. The BKB Night Stalker running in once a Crystal Maiden so badly is going to get it using the Void to get the last hit, but Lycan Throat wants revenge on her for doing that. Horror Strike is barely missing, going into a split Earth the Bear did indeed. Dust of the Seat to come out. And they will all take a fall. Tangle landing on one of the Bears, how unfortunate. SK getting awfully low, but the Borrow Strike to come in, it might be enough, and Universe unable to pick up the kill on three very low HP heroes. Immediately buying back, or Tide Hunter buying back. And finally, the Ancient will take a fall. Venomous Gale to go down. The Edict doing so much damage. GG well played coming out of both sides. And I've got to pop out. Will it be enough? Chen just barely getting away. But the army of creeds is chasing after him. Doesn't matter, the game has ended that. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Mouse Sports going up against Evil Geniuses with Lycan and Mouse Sports securing the kill. This has been the Defense 2, brought to you and organized by Join Dota, commentated by Toshley, and so on and so forth, with of course our sponsors, Razor and Ben Q. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.